Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Avery, and today we're going to be talking about some romance books that have a caretaking scene in them. Now, I know that this is something that a lot of other people love in their romance books. I adore it, um, where there is a scene in there where someone in the couple is taking care of another person, whether they are injured or sick. So I have 10 books in here that have a caretaking scene of them by some means. So let's dive right on into these recommendations. First, we have my favorite romance book of all time, which is no surprise, is Radiance by Grace Draven. This is a fantasy romance book that is also an arranged marriage and they're from two different species. You have Ildiko, who is a human, woman essentially and then you have a uh, Brishan who is prince of the Kai and they're kind of like spares to their kingdom and they're put in an arranged marriage with one another. At first when they meet one another they're kind of like think the other person is ugly <laughs> but they become great and amazing friends and then it grows into something more and it is beautiful and amazing. In this book Brishan ends up getting sick at one point because um there's this custom amongst their Kai the Kai people, where if one of if someone dies, you basically have to um, hold that essence in somebody else's body with you um, in order for it to like go to their family, if that makes sense. So like one of Brishan's soldiers ended up dying like while they were traveling to their land. And so he took the burden of carrying in honor, burden and honor in the same sense of carrying this soldier's essence in his body to travel to this, uh, to their land so that his family can have their essence because normally they keep that kind of like in a bottle or like on their mantle. They had to like travel to that area to have that essence given to them. Um, and so he had to carry this in here. And so it's a sickness. I forget the title for it, but whenever um, you do this, you end up being sick because you basically have your essence in your body and then somebody else's at the same time. So you get fever, chills, you get very, very, very sick. So Ildiko ends up like nursing Brishan as well as like some other people in the book, but Ildiko is there by his side the entire time. And this is like the first scene in the book where you like truly see them like, like have affection for one another. It's not necessarily like romance, but it is like this affection that I swooned over. So like through her nursing him, he like um, notices how caring and amazing she is and oh, I love that scene so much in this one. Next, I have Willa's Beast by Ruby Dixon. This is book number three, a part of the Ice Home series. This is an alien romance series, and I know that the guy on the cover does not look like a typical uh, Ruby Dixon hero, but his alien species, um, he's actually a mix of some alien species, uh, but one of them is Praxian, and that's also in some of her other books that aren't necessarily Ice Planet Barbarian related. So she has written some characters in her books that look like this guy. But anyway, this is about Willa and Gren, and they were both like kind of like stranded on this ice planet with a bunch of other um, aliens and human women. Gren used to be a gladiator, an alien gladiator, and so when he arrives on this planet, he doesn't understand any of the language anyone is speaking. And so he maybe thinks that he's like, put in an arena to kill all these people. And so like they tie him up because he starts attacking people. And Willa does not like that and doesn't like how they're not even trying to communicate with him. And so she frees him and they basically run away together, even though they don't speak the same language and they still don't understand one another. She just wanted to save him. Through them like escaping and living in caves by themselves on this planet, um, Gren ends up getting attacked by one of the animals on the planet. And so Willa tries to save him. Uh, from this injury, treat him, and um, she ends up getting some help from one of some of her other alien and human friends. But some of the portion of this book um, is him like getting over this uh, injury that he has. And through him like getting better and like Willow nursing him back to health basically, they start to realize that they may or may not uh, be mates on this planet. So I know the cover may be intimidating for some people. I don't, I don't mind it, but um, I feel like the caretaking scene in here was just Great. Next I have Just a Heartbeat Away by Carabas Stone. This is an age gap romance and a single parent romance. The heroine in here used to be the hero's son's kindergarten teacher years ago, um, but it is years later, a couple years later, he's still in elementary school. His son is, um, but now she's the school counselor for a different school. And so they come across each other all those years later. Um, he's actually a widow, by the way. Um, his wife ended up dying when um, she was, when the heroine was his son's kindergarten teacher. Hopefully I'm not 
making anyone confused right now. <laughs> so the hero and the heroine, they made all over again. He works kind of like lunch duty for the school. And so they kind of have like a workplace romance environment. He is quite older than her. And so he's trying to be like, hey, you should date people your age. And she's like, no, I want you. I don't care how old you are. Um, and it's just sweet, slow burn. Amazing, great. Carbass Joan really like provides the tension for you that I love in romances. And you really get to see these characters grow in loving with one another. There's a scene in here where the hero is sick. I think him and his son are sick at the same time or his son gave him a sickness. And so she comes over to uh, help them um, because he's having a pretty hard time. Like I think he got the flu and so she helps take care of him and I believe his son. And it was just, it was really cute to me. <laughs> Next I have Brooklyn Air by Serena Bowen. This is book number four, a part of the Brooklyn Bruiser series. So our hero in here, he ends up being the owner of the hockey team, the Brooklyn Bruisers that you read about in the first couple books in the series. Um, so he's the owner of this hockey team. He's like a billionaire and the heroine, it used to be his assistant. In one of the previous books, and you read about it at the beginning of this one, the heroine ends up getting a concussion by like falling on the ice rink. And so the hero kind of like helps her and uh, makes sure she's going to doctor's appointments and helping her because she just wants to come back to work because she loves her job. But the hero's trying to be like, hey, you should take care of yourself um, and make sure that you're all better before you come, like work for me still. And he has had the hugest crush on his assistant for years and she's never like really noticed him like that um, until he starts being really affectionate towards her and stuff like that and taking care of her. And it was just so sweet. I love sweet nerdy heroes and the hero in here is definitely that. Next, I have Sweet Filthy Boy by Christina Lauren. This is a contemporary romance series and this is one of Christina Lauren's like earlier published works. So it's pretty. It's pretty spicy, you know? Um, so this series is all about three girlfriends and three guy friends, and they end up meeting each other at Vegas, in Las Vegas one night, and they end up all getting pretty drunk, and then they end up getting drunk and they married to one another. And so the first book is about the one couple, a part of the three people, the three couples that did not decide to get their marriage in old. And so they really wanna like see how this relationship will go with them. So the hero in here, he's actually from France and he, he has to go back to France after this Las Vegas trip. And so the heroine is like, okay, I'll go with you. And that'll be like my summer trip and we can see what's going on between us. And so she goes with him to France to further or deepen their relationship and see if it can last. Apparently the, uh, the night before the flight or the morning of the flight, whenever, um, to go to France, she ends up getting like horrible food poisoning and she, she don't feel good. <laughs> she is sick, ill on the plane and after when they've landed. Like he has to help take care of her. They barely know each other by the way. And she's like retching in the, um, bathroom in the plane and like he's trying to help her and then he ends up like having to like basically drag her and bring her to his apartment and nurse her at his apartment and take care of her and she basically like out for the count for days and he's so sweet and like making sure she has food and water and like getting her medicine and maybe a doctor um because he's just like so worried about her because she's like violently ill and she's just like mortified obviously she barely knows this man who's just now her husband for the first time and it it was it was honestly hilarious though then i have one of my favorite books ever my favorite book of the year which is actor age eve brown by talia hibbert this is the third book a part of the brown sisters series y'all this book is so good so this is about eve brown and she's kind of like a trust fund baby her parents have an intervention with her at the beginning of this book and are like hey uh, we're cutting out your money. We're taking away your money until you can keep a steady job for a year. She's like, oh, okay. And so after this intervention, she goes and like kind of like drives around and she comes across this bed and breakfast who has a help wanted sign in their window. And she's like, great, amazing. So she goes in and she doesn't have anything prepared. She doesn't have a resume. She's not dressed correctly. And um, they're trying to hire a chef. And so the hero in here, Jacob, is the owner of this bed and breakfast. And right when he sees Eve, he does not like her because <laughs> she's not put together. She doesn't have a resume. She's not prepared at all. And so he doesn't really like her. And so he kind of like rejects her and uh, they both go to like leave. Um, and Eve accidentally may or may not hit Jacob with her car. And so <laughs> um, he may or may not have some like broken bones, you know? And so uh, she, <laughs> she like decides to help him and like take care of him and like basically like live in his room in the bed and breakfast with him to like help him and nurse him back to health, you know? Even though he does not want this woman around him whatsoever, she freaking hit him with her car. It was an accident though. And like, he does not want her around. And she's just like, sorry, 
I have to make it up to you somehow. And that's how she did it was by taking care of him. We of course have the infamous The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This book is very known for its caretaking scene. And I feel like that's like a spark for people loving the caretaking scene. This is just an enemies to lovers workplace romance. Uh, they both work at the same company and they're kind of like vying for this higher position. Um, and they both don't like one another or they seem to not like one another. Uh, there's kind of like a fine line between love and hate y'all. Um, and so there's this scene where the heroine, I believe it's the heroine that gets really, really, really sick and the hero takes care of her. If I'm not mistaken, it might be gender flipped. He might get sick and she takes care of him, but I'm pretty sure it's the woman in here. I've read this book in years, y'all, but like one of them I know gets really, really sick and the caretaking scene in here is just so sweet. And like, you get to see them like slowly start to let down their guard during this scene. Then I have the Viking Chiefs Marriage Alliance. This is a historical romance that's also like a Viking romance. Um, the heroine in here, she was a Jarl or like, a Viking King's wife, but he ended up dying and she was kind of like used and abused in that relationship. And so she's like, I never want to be married again. I never want a man to have control over me. And so she decides to go on this long boat and basically like travel far away. And so the hero in here ends up saving her and a bunch of people who were on this long boat because the long boat ends up crashing. And so he ends up taking her back to his village and he does not like her immediately because he thinks that she is stuck up, snotty, rich, only superficial when that is not really what she's like at all um but that is the perception that he has of her in his brain um and so through some means they have to get in an arranged marriage with one another you read about why when you read the book and so it's kind of like hate to love in that sense both of them do not like one another my memory is horrible y'all if you don't know but like i believe the hero either gets hurt or sick i think it's hurt i think he gets like injured and the heroine helps take care of him, if I'm not mistaken. During that scene, he realizes like, oh, this woman is not who I thought she was. Like she actually maybe cares about me and doesn't only care about rich material things. Uh, and so that was kind of like a shift in the book for the hero in here. Hopefully I'm not wrong. Hopefully I'm not mistaken that for another book, but um, I do remember there definitely being a caretaking scene in this one. Next, I have Most of All You by Mia Sheridan. This is a romance book that is very emotional. So just like, Beware, there's trigger warnings in here, the hero in here, um, I believe he uh, used to be like a kidnapped kid, like he escaped captivity, he was kidnapped and assaulted, sexually assaulted by this disgusting man. And he ends up like basically being very famous because he escaped that horrible life. And the heroine in here, uh, she's going through some stuff and she's a certain type of dancer at a club. And the hero in here like comes up to her with the proposition of, hey, um, I will pay you to help me be more comfortable around women because because of what he like experienced in the past with sexual assault, he doesn't like people touching him. Um, and so he's just like, can you just help me even become like comfortable being in close vicinity with a woman? Like just like touching her hand or her touching my arm or like whatever, like very simple, like, you know? And so um, they kind of like get into this exchange of like her helping him like recover from his past, but she's very reluctant to. She at first says no, um, just because like she's going through some stuff at the moment, um, but then she becomes pretty desperate for money and they get in this exchange. But um, at the beginning of the book, um, because of where she works, there are some men who don't like to be told no. And so in the parking lot of the establishment that she works at, a man comes on to her and she basically says like, no, no means no. And he ends up beating her to a pulp and she basically almost dies. Like she, she gets so beaten. And um, the hero in here realizes that she lives alone and he really wants to take care of her. And so she, he brings her to his house and she lives with him for a while um, while she's getting over her concussion, her broken bones, everything. He basically helps her and kind of like saves her life in a way, like mentally and physically. This book is a roller coaster of emotions. It is a sucker punch in the gut, y'all. But I feel like it is so worth the read when you read about what these characters go through and how they come together in the end. And lastly, I have A Lady by Midnight by Tessa Dare. This is the third book, a part of the Spindle Cove series. So this is a historical romance series that all takes place in Spindle Cove or otherwise known as Spinster Cove. This is a town where a bunch of ladies go, um, whether spinsters or they don't really want to find a husband, whatever the case, it's mostly filled with women. The heroine here is actually like a general, I'm pretty sure, um, or he was a part of the army. And he has always had like moon eyes over this woman that's in this town. I believe she's the piano teacher of the town. Um, and like a bunch of things happen in here where um, they like have to pretend to be 
um, engaged to one another and you like read about why in here. It's a lot, a lot of stuff going on in here. Um, but there's one point where the hero gets injured, I'm pretty sure. And the heroine kind of like sneaks away, sneaks away to go like basically like help him and like care for him. Even though like if she were caught to like take care of him, she would be compromised essentially. Things may or may not happen in that situation between the two of them that um, causes him to be like, hmm, maybe, maybe I can actually marry this woman. So um, this was really, really, really sweet. And I just loved like the aspect of like her, like sneaking to go take care of him, even though she knows like it might be detrimental to her like standing in society, like she doesn't care. She just wants to make sure that he's okay. So there you have it. Those are 10 romance books that have the caretaking scene in them. I love caretaking scenes and romances so much. And so I hope that y'all do too. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.